Hey guys, welcome back to Comic Again. I'm Shannon, and today we're going to be taking a look at Ghostbusters Volume 8, Mass Hysteria Part 1, written by Eric Burnham and illustrated by Dan Sconing in celebration of the Ghostbusters 30th anniversary. So stay tuned. So, hey guys, welcome to Comic Again. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell. Comment below, hit the like button, and maybe even share with your friends. Good job. We have cookies. And milk. Might be semen, I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Alright, so as I said, today we're taking a look at Ghostbusters Volume 8 Mass Hysteria Part 1, written by Eric Burnham, illustrated by Dan Sconing, and this is the celebration of the Ghostbusters 30th anniversary. Gozer the Gozerian, the Destructor, was once drawn to Manhattan, but could not complete his work. That's the good news. The bad news is that he isn't the only god who has taken notice of Earth. This volume collects issues number 13 through 16 of Ghostbusters. The stars of this volume are Peter Venkman, Egon Spangler, Ray Stans, Winston Zeddemore, Ron Alexander, the rookie from Ghostbusters video game who now has his own Ghostbusters franchise in Chicago. Uh, who works alongside Ron Alexander, as well as after this issue, or after Mass Hysteria Part 2, excuse me, uh, he brings on board two other former members of Ron Alexander's Ghost Smashers. Uh, also included in this are Jenny Moran, who is another former uh, Ghost Smasher, uh, Kylie Griffin, Melanie Ortiz, Louis Tully, Janine Melnitz, Dana Barrett, and even a small part for Eduardo from Extreme Ghostbusters. Uh, Eduardo does portray some shop help um, at Ray's Occult Books alongside Kylie Griffin. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I hope sometime they, they bring on board the other two Extreme Ghostbusters. That'd be nice. Uh, also featured in this story is the villain. We have the Sumerian Goddess of Chaos and the sister of Gozer, Tiamat. So we start off with Winston Zeddemore getting married. And of course, Peter is, <laughs> he's being his usual um, belligerent self. Uh, all the while, the other Ghostbusters, the rookie, Ron Alexander, um, Melanie Ortiz, and Kylie Griffin, are off busting ghosts while the Ghostbusters and Janine are celebrating uh, Winston's marriage. Um, <laughs> so of course the Ghostbusters get called to this, uh, it appears to be a hotel or apartment building or something or other. Uh, some kind of office building I believe. And they encounter the this hanging ghost. Uh, they are able to defeat the ghost and continue on. Uh, Winston and his wife, newfound wife, says say their vows, and of course, Peter Venkman, being ever so lovable and being the ambassador of Cooth, ends the celebration with. All right, let's go to the bar. <laughs> so before Winston and his new bride are able to uh, celebrate their newfound marriage and their honeymoon, it begins raining blood. Um, and then we cut to a scene in Dana Barrett's apartment. That's right, guys. We get the return of Dana Barrett and eventually Louis Tully. Tiamat visits Dana Barrett, and instead of having two hellhounds like Gozer had, Tiamat has two griffins. And so 
Dana contacts Janine and asks her to keep Peter and the guys out of it, but she needs help. So, of course, Janine sends uh, Kylie and Melanie to kind of investigate. Uh, then we start seeing cars floating in midair, and during this part, we get a nice little cameo that Dan Sconing did of the DeLorean <laughs> from Back to the Future. Um, of course, back in this takes place shortly, um, a little while after Ghostbusters of a video game. Um, so it's probably the early to mid 90s, I believe. So DeLoreans were still pretty, uh, pretty well seen around cities at the time. Um, so while Kylie and Melanie are tasked by Janine to investigate Dana's apartment, um, it's revealed that Oscar's in Europe visiting his father, uh, and Winston ends up cutting his honeymoon short in order to help the other Ghostbusters with the whole raining blood situation. Uh, Louis Tully ends up returning to New York from California, and um, he gets picked up by his cousin. Uh, I, I don't know what Dan Sconing was trying to say with this, um, but it does kind of make sense. Uh, he kind of pretty much portrayed Lewis's cousin as um, Eugene Levy. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Eugene Levy was the father in the Amer American Pie movies. Uh, he played in several Steve Martin movies. Um, very hilarious actor. But you get little cameos like this throughout the uh, throughout all of IDW's Ghostbusters, specifically when Dan Sconing is um, draw, doing the art for it. Um, I, th I think he likes to put in little little Easter eggs there like that uh, to see who's really paying attention. But I thought it was really cool. So anyway, Dana becomes possessed by one of Timot's Griffins. Uh, and then Lewis ends up being seduced in a bar by Tiamat disguised as a very attractive blonde woman. Uh, Walter Peck orders the Ghostbusters to figure out what's going on with the blood rain. And about that time when he and Peter are arguing because uh, Walter Peck is currently the director of Peacock. Uh, which is the basically it's the Paranormal Oversight Commission of in New York City. The Ghostbusters answer directly to Walter Peck, which is just which makes for some very hilarious uh, back and forth, particularly between he and Peter. Um, but anyway, while they're going over this, Janine's on line one, and another call comes through. Peter quickly answers it and a voice comes over the phone says Peter help it's Dana he takes off like a bat out of hell on a motorcycle with a proton pack strapped to his back ready to help his one true love um, the way Eric Burnham uh, portrays the Ghostbusters in these comics um, Ray and Egon are portrayed extremely close to their movie counterparts. Um, however, Peter and Winston are portrayed more closely to their real Ghostbusters uh, counterparts. Uh, Peter does look more like, you know, the Bill Murray version, uh, but his personality is more like the real Ghostbusters version of Peter Rankman. Uh, Winston, on the other hand, um, he's kind of, they kind of took, merged the personalities of the movie Winston and the real Ghostbusters Winston together for this uh, IDW Ghostbusters Winston. Uh, and he, I don't know why, but Dan Sconing didn't really um, draw him to look similar to the movie uh, Winston Zeddemore, uh, like he did with the other three Ghostbusters. I mean, obviously you can tell he's Winston, but he doesn't really have that um, Winston look to him. You know, 
with the other three Ghostbusters and Janine and Dana and Louis Tully, you can obviously tell uh, he took a lot, a lot of inspiration from the movie, uh, from the actors who portrayed him in the movies. However, with Winston, it, it's almost like he completely revamped him. Uh, he's a lot more uh, muscular, he looks like. Um, and I, I don't know, it, it kind of makes sense the way he appears, but it, it's kind of off-putting, especially considering he tried so hard um, to make the other Ghostbusters and Janine and Dana and Lewis all look like their movie counterparts. You know, it, it's kind of, it's a little weird. Uh, but anyway, and I mean, when you guys, if you guys haven't read this yet, Dana Barrett, the way Dan Sconing drew Dana Barrett, looks exactly like Sigourney Weaver. I mean, it's just amazing. And you can tell he took the design of, Sig uh, of Sigourney Weaver from the uh, first Ghostbusters movie and used it for this for mass hysteria um she's got the leggings like she wore in the first ghostbusters movie um talking to her mom on the phone like in the ghost first ghostbusters movie uh so on and so forth it didn't really take much from the uh ghostbusters 2 with the exception of maybe her hairstyle um so anyway Shortly after Peter gets to her, uh, Dana's place, the others arrive. Ray, Egon, Winston, Janine, Kylie, Ron, the rookie, Melanie, all of the other Ghostbusters thus far, only to find that Tiamat has possessed both Dana and Lewis. Um, so of course the elevators are out, and so the Ghostbusters have to make their way up several flights of stairs to get to Dana. While on their way up the stairs to take on the Sumerian goddess, they are attacked by a ghost judge, which uh, Peter kind of gets very irritated right away because he's kind of keeping him from helping Dana, who just to, the way they portray Dana and Peter's relationship is just amazing. It's like they both love each other so much, but who know they're no good together as a couple. Um, but they also know that if they, if they're around each other, then they'll more than likely end up becoming a couple. Uh, it almost kind of seems like, um, <laughs> for those of you who ever watched the soap opera, One Life to Live, uh, kind of like Todd Manning and Blair's relationship on One Life to Live. Um, they love each other, but they can't get along and they can't stay together. Otherwise they'll just kill each other. <laughs> It, and it really digs deep into Peter's persona, into his psyche, into his personality. Um, what he's willing to go through for this woman. Um, she is his one true love, but he knows they're no good together. And he's willing to drop everything anytime she needs him uh, to come to her rescue. Is the uh, what happens here in mass hysteria. Uh, so anyway, Peter's getting very irritated and he calls upon Winston. He's like, Winston, you're almost practically a lawyer, right? I guess Winston's now new wife is studying to be a lawyer. I think I, I, I'm a little off put by that, but he says, yeah. And he comes up with some uh, legal term, shows a trap and busts this ghost judge. Then the Ghostbusters encounter future versions of the original four, Peter, Ray, Winston, and Egon. And of course, Winst the future Winston tells younger Winston, kind of whispers it to him that uh, you and I both know that the only way to stop this thing, you're the only one who can stop this thing uh, because it takes a sacrifice, a great sacrifice um, to stop her. Uh, that'll be revealed in Mass Hysteria Part 2. Um, so finally they do reach Tiamat's temple and they attempt to blast her only to get thrown back like Gozer did to him in the first movie. But then they decide, all of them, 
decide to cross their streams. We're talking a whole buttload of proton energy coming at the Sumerian God. Peter, Egon, Ray, Winston, Ron, the rookie. Um, you get Kylie Griffin, Melanie Ortiz, and Janine all using their proton streams against this goddess. And everything goes white. And it's believed at the end of this volume that Dana and Lewis are no longer possessed. Uh, but Egon wants to run some more tests. So that's pretty much where this ends. But then we pick back up right where part one left off in mass hysteria part two which i'll go in at a later into at a later date uh, but overall i really enjoyed uh, both mass hysteria part one and part two i consider the mass hysteria um, one and two to be another ghostbusters movie pretty much you got ghostbusters you got ghostbusters 2 you got ghostbusters a video game which is essentially our ghostbusters 3 and then you've got Ghostbusters Mass Hysteria, which would essentially be Ghostbusters 4. That's how good of a job they did with this story. Um, if we ever did get, if we would have ever gotten a Ghostbuster, another Ghostbusters movie, um, I would have liked to see them bring Mass Hysteria to the big screen. Um, I mean, I guess they still kind of can if they uh, decided to do an animated movie which would be pretty good. They could still, they could keep all the original uh, actors with the exception of Harold Ramis, of course, uh, and have them do their voices, do the voices. But I mean, that that's how good the story is. That's how awesome uh, Eric Burnham wrote it. Um, and Dan Sconing did an awesome job with the artwork. Like I said, there were, uh, I had a few little um, kind of quandaries about uh, why Dan uh, designed uh, Winston the way, way he did and why Eric kind of portrays Peter as um, more of the real Ghostbusters Peter Venkman as opposed to the Bill, Bur Bill Murray Peter Venkman. But very great story. I give it a 10 out of 10. So yeah, I mean, if you guys haven't read it yet, I highly suggest going out, uh, going on Comixology, going out to your local comic book shop, picking up Ghostbusters volume eight mass hysteria uh from 2014 uh like i said this, right after mass hysteria 2 you get ghostbusters uh the full ghostbusters chicago you get three members of the uh former uh ghost smashers joining with the rookie um, which he said in other issues that he, he keeps the rookie to keep him grounded uh, so he doesn't get a big head on his shoulders. Um, <laughs> even though he's kind of the owner of the Chicago Ghostbusters franchise, he's still called the rookie. Um, I don't know if they, I think they might have actually revealed his name in the comic, but I could be mistaken. I want to say they did. But as like just a one-off line or whatever, everyone else just refers to him as the rookie. So, yeah, like I said, ten out of ten. Um, I highly recommend this comic, um, Mass Hysteria Part One and Part Two, both equally as good. And in Part Two, you get to see the return of Gozer, which we will go into. Um, probably later in the week, maybe next week, depending on how much time I have. Sorry for the late upload, guys. I've been, I uh, I produced a ton of Funko Pop videos to have on hand just to be able to upload something uh, the same day every week, every Tuesday. My work season just started back a couple weeks ago, so I'm really busy. Plus, I'm doing this whole horror video um, production thing on my other channel been try uh john was supposed to get me a review of scooby-doo greenland meets green lantern and green uh arrow which i sent him a copy of to review um he's been having problems getting his uh review posted to google drive and sent to me so I'll, I'll see what i can do maybe tuesday i'll be able to get that for you since we're supposed to be filming the next 
episode five of the watching on my horror channel, uh, Twisted Zombie Productions. Uh, so until then, guys, take care. Get you some Ghostbusters comics and have a good one. of course if you like this video make sure to hit that subscribe button make sure you hit the like comment below and share with your friends <laughs> i hate you